is architecture important for AI? The word architecture seems to invoke a wide range of reactions from business managers. Some swear by it and others think it's totally bogus. Is architecture really necessary? Let me focus on business architecture, which is part of the field of enterprise architecture. To get an overview of enterprise architecture, check out the link to another video in the description below. The essence of business architecture is very simple. It helps us understand how different parts of the business fit and work together to deliver value to the internal or external customer. I'll use an example to illustrate this. In any business, people have to communicate with one another. In a small company with say three employees, you might chat over coffee to share information. There are only three lines of communication. If you have four employees, then you got six lines of communication. For five employees, you got 10 lines and so on. If you care, the number of one-to-one -one connections for an N-person company is computed by this formula, N times N minus one by two. For a 10,000 person company, that's close to 50 million lines of communication. So obviously you all cannot sit around a huge coffee table and chat. You need a better way. But first, let's separate out the structure from the tool. The lines in these drawings show the structure. The tools would be things like email, speaking, documentation, and so on. We'll just focus on the structure and here are some options. The reporting structure in an organization dictates that communication happen in a certain way. If someone say in marketing wants to communicate with another in engineering, one possible route to take would be through and up the chain and then down. Even though this is inefficient, this is how it's done even today. As I said, this is totally inefficient and the top could cause the bottleneck. It also encourages silos. To avoid this, one-to-one -one communication may be encouraged within certain levels. This is better because it facilitates interaction among many across the business areas. Another way is one-to-many communication by sharing information, say, through a presentation. Here, the sharing is synchronous, which means that the speaker and the listeners have to be available at the same time. For asynchronous communication, you might drop the information in a place that could be picked up by the consumer at any time. But in this case, the interactivity at the moment is lost. Email is asynchronous. And as you can imagine, holding a conversation over email can get tiring. Many to many is another mode which happens in meetings. Many people can communicate with many others. But of course here too, too many meetings are not good and neither is it scalable. See what we did here? We just modeled different ways of communication. This is an easy example of using architecture to understand and model the communication with the intent of making these things better. There are many other examples of using business architecture. For example, you could use it for efficient execution of strategy, for effective mergers of acquisition, for improving customer experiences, for reducing cost of operational processes, and a whole lot more. One question architecture can help answer is, how do you integrate AI into the organization? In a McKinsey survey, over 70% of CEOs indicated that AI, or artificial intelligence, is the single most technology that could determine the future of a company. This implies that as companies bring AI into their organization, they need to do so in a systematic and strategic way. One of the questions is, given your company's specific resources, strengths, and ecosystem, what's the best way to use AI? Should you start off with a chatbot or should you fundamentally rethink your business model? The former is tactical and the latter is strategic. Tactical is okay as long as you know where you're going. A bunch of tactical uses of AI will not necessarily get you the lift or the ROI in the long term if these are done in a haphazard way. Business architecture can help to frame the business side of the challenge. Follow this up with application data and infrastructure architecture can give you a better idea of how to leverage AI in your company. For example, 
if you have a cloud migration strategy to move your applications, data, and infrastructure to the Google Cloud platform, which by the way is one of the most mature for AI, then you could use their native AI services right away to get an immediate lift. AI algorithms will be commoditized, but your data is uniquely yours. So if you can use data strategically in combination with data from other partners, you can quickly achieve a competitive advantage and build out something that your competitors can't easily replicate. All these concepts and visuals we just explore constitutes architecture. Without a structured and strategic approach, your AI implementations will have far less value than you might expect. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. For a one-page visual summary of this video, please sign on to my website. Thank you deeply for giving me the motivation to do what I do.